Hello, I'm Aisha Sasei, in for Femi OK. Welcome to Inside Africa, your weekly window to the continent. On the program this week, a special look at Sierra Leone. We'll find out what the people think about the job their president has been doing since his inauguration. And some fishermen will tell us why their nets aren't as full as they used to be and what that's doing to their lives. Also ahead... We begin in Sierra Leone, three months into Ernest Baikoroma's presidency. He came to power after a mostly peaceful election, the first since UN peacekeepers left two and a half years ago. One of his main campaign promises was to end long-running power shortages. So how is Mr. Koroma doing? Thomas Nyabo asked some Sierra Leoneans to rate his performance so far. Andrew Johnson spent eight years mining diamonds until rebels killed three of his family members during Sierra Leone's brutal 10-year civil war. Fearing for his life, he fled to the capital, Freetown, and learned how to drive a taxi cab. He earns the equivalent of about $5 a day. Well, as for now, the life is better, because I can still remember the past government. Things are very hard. But now that we have an, a new government, everything is better, because before we don't have, we have a poor electricity, but now we have a good electricity. Life is better, but there are still problems. Johnson, who shares a small house with his extended family, says food prices are rising fast, with the cost of bread and cooking oil nearly doubling since Karoma became president. Above all, he wants a better paying job, and he wants the president to attract businesses to Sierra Leone. If I have any opportunity today to see the president also express my opinion to the president, I will just try to give her advice to build up Sierra Leone, because Sierra Leone is a very small country, a very nice country. Sierra Leone is not too hard to develop. But it's not easy either, as a tour of Freetown tells you. Restoring electricity to developed areas has been one of President Karoma's greatest accomplishments since taking office in the fall of 2007. For countless Sierra Leoneans living in checks like this one behind me, though, there is still no electricity, no running water, and little chance of getting either anytime soon. Hawa Karoma, no relation to the president, has no water or electricity. She says her life is more difficult since the election. She's raising seven children and her husband is out of work. I want the new government to create jobs. My oldest son just completed school, but there are no decent jobs for him. We need the government to create a center that helps them find work. The people are suffering. Some people have no money to provide for their family, not even lunch for the children. The equation is similar for her neighbor, Aminata. She's raising three children on her husband's modest government salary. Some of us are not working, right? So if the prices are down, we can able meet our ends. But now, for now, the cost of living is very high. The food, the fuel, the transportation. But the, the light is no problem, we are getting current but we cannot eat current and sleep on it. Jobs and prices and making ends meet. It's the same lament everywhere. The UN estimates about two-thirds of adults are unemployed. The professionals also have a mixed report card for President Karoma. Valnora Edwin is the director of Campaign for Good Governance, a non-governmental agency. While welcoming the improvement in the power supply, she's disappointed in other ways, such as the lack of women in government. I think we have very few women. Um, there's the argument that even like for parliamentary seats, etc., women do not come forward because of the economic implications and the violence, etc. But we think like for ministerial positions, for other appointments, you can sort of create a balance, which shows another sign of commitment, which so far we have not seen. All in all, her approval rating for President Koroma is about even. I think for now, uh, prefer using percentages, I'll, be, I'll give him like 52% so far. Certainly the president has plenty to do. Sierra Leone's infrastructure is ruined. It desperately needs investment. But this mineral-rich country has plenty of potential. And if Mahmoud Ba is any example, it has some natural entrepreneurs. He's 28 years old and owns a roadside call center, charging people for making calls on his mobile phone. And he says the president needs time. Um, well, the president is doing fine. He's trying. He's trying, but at least life is more difficult. Yeah. 
because we've just gone through some hard times. You cannot amend it one time or even in a year or two. After a decade of warfare, it will take much longer than a few years to put this country back on its feet. But at least now, it's at peace. Thomas Naibu, CNN, Freetown. Up next, Thomas looks at the struggles Sierra Leonean fishermen are facing and why their nets are coming up nearly empty. Also ahead, Egypt says many Sierra Leoneans who live along the coast depend on fishing for their livelihoods. But thriving demand for their daily catch may actually be making their jobs much more difficult. The Institute for Security Studies, a South African think tank, recently published a report that said poaching and overfishing could soon cause stocks to collapse for a number of African countries. As Thomas Naibo reports, Sierra Leone's fishing community says that's already happening. A timeless image on the west coast of Africa, a fisherman in a handmade boat, repairing his nets. Like his father and grandfather before him, Alpha Shaku Karoma is heading out to sea. But these are troubled waters. The fish are disappearing, and so too is his livelihood. Ten years ago, you, you, you go to fish most likely two or three hours. You go to fish, after three to three hours, you come back. But now you need to take two days, three days, even a week. Karoma blames industrial fishing vessels from other countries. Some ships operate with permission from West African governments. Others fish illegally. We have a lot of um, illegal fishing vessels coming to our sea. They use the use station because of our sea, territorial sea, it's not properly protected. Because of that, they come into the sea illegally, fish and take away some fishes. The solution is that we need to have, we need to empower our military navy to properly monitor the sea. Experts say, as a result of both illegal and legal fishing, many coastal economies in West Africa are being decimated as the fish populations shrink. The Environmental Justice Foundation says global demand is fueling overfishing in the region. Small local fishermen are being pushed out. The men of Godrich have been fishing these waters for generations. Fishing is the only way they know how to provide for their families. With the fish population in decline, they say their very existence is on the line. Damba Kamaru began fishing as a boy. He's 40 now and has four children and a wife to support. He spends his days repairing his nets, running errands, catching a few hours sleep before spending the night on the water fishing. It is hard to fish in because when you put the nets in the water, you can, you can you have no sleep. You can sit down till morning. Then you have to draw the night and put it in the boat. Then from there you come, you come, you come, home, you come back home. You see, there's no sleeping in the night. You can't sleep. Five years ago, Kamaru made the equivalent of $7 a night. Now, he's lucky to earn half that amount. Kamaru says he's most worried about those fishing vessels that practice bottom trawling which involves pulling a net through water behind boats. On a single pass, it can remove up to a quarter of an area's seabed life and leave local fishermen like him with nothing to catch. He worries that if the fish continue to disappear, so too will a way of life that dates back centuries. Thomas Nibo, CNN, Goderich, Sierra Leone. Coming up on...